Okay, I think we can start. Um, so welcome everyone. So welcome on uh, our webinar, how to grow your business in uh, with the right software decisions. Um, so before we'll start, a uh, couple words about ourselves. So Patricia, ladies first. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Patricia. I'm general manager and I'm responsible for running UX Lab in Aileron, which supports the implementation of UX UI projects. And uh, as a certified moderator of Design Sprint workshops, I'm totally enthusiastic of design thinking and customer experience. I've got 12 uh, years experience in the IT industry, in particular in providing uh, for financial solutions and banks around the world. And of course, after, after work, I love uh, ultramarathons, cycling, and generally everything related with the mountains. So this is me. Okay. <laughs> Hello, okay. everyone, once again. So it's my turn. So my name is Maciej Kasprzak. Uh, so I'm, uh, I think, more than 16 years in software development. So I've been uh, managing and developing also projects. Uh, in IT, in telco, in banking, in aviation. So I think that I have quite a vast experience in different industries. And I'm actually heading one of the business units in Aileron. So we provide uh, financial technology services to our customers, not only banks, but in general financial industry. And in my free time, my hobbies, actually, I have a lot of them. So um, I like triathlon. I like playing guitar, to be honest. Uh, I'm not really good in that one, but I'm trying. I'm still trying. I'm hoping that I will learn it. And today we would like to um, you know, we would like to invite you to our webinar and spend a little bit of time uh, with us. Uh, we hope that these topics that we will be talking about today are interesting for you, and everyone actually finds something interesting um, in it. Okay. So before we start, uh, we would like to show you. Um, some very interesting um, sentence. So as someone said that great businesses uh, focus on solutions, not technologies, uh, we deeply believe in Aileron that uh, we have to focus first on customer needs, uh, customer business case, pain points, specific pain points, uh, keep the solutions simple, easy to use and effective. Uh, then comes actually the technology. So first understand the issue, build the design architecture, and then choose the right technology for it. So this is the, let's say, um, the, the, the right order of building uh, solutions. Um, okay, and uh, key takeaways for today's uh, meeting. So we'll be speaking about two interesting topics. So the first one is what approach is actually worth considering when you plan building a software solution. Mm, and the second one, uh, what software uh, delivery model uh, you can choose uh, for your specific case, for your specific challenge. And as a third point, uh, mm, as nothing comes for free, but in this case, we have something free for you. <laughs> uh, so we have a bonus at the end of the meeting. If you will stay with us, uh, we can explain you, or we can give you more details. What is it all about? So let's kick off. Uh, so the first topic, Patricia, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. So I would like to start with the ideation and scoping uh, field. So you've got an idea, but what, don't know uh, what to do next exactly. So we've got the answer. This is a very simple answer, the design sprint. So in short words, design sprint is a process that concentrates on finding answers to quick questions by creating prototypes testing with, uh, with the clients. But before we uh, jump to in the design sprint, we always start with the problem framing workshops. So this is the workshops to understand, to share understand team alignment and defining common strategy. We always concentrate on, you know, very good understand to your problem, business need, the customer need, and then the find opportunity, how we can solve your problem in the design sprint. What is next and what is it this design sprint as i mentioned this is few day process for answering critical business questions so the first two days concentrate on finding and solutions and designing it and especially during the first day uh, please imagine that this is the for example the monday and uh, we concentrate on determining and understanding the exact uh, challenge 
So we define a long-term goal, converting your current problems into challenges. We inspiring everything ideas from the market across the market and generate a lot of ideas, as many as possible. And what is important that during this first day, every participant of this design sprint create own solutions sketch on the you know on the paper but it is really great and really creative thing to and integrate uh, the generate design sprint members and during the second day what you actually see on this screen this all of these sketches all of the you know the visions which we prepared day before we um, organize on the wall like you like you see this is the real photo of our workshops and we go into and we are trying to find you know everything what is what is good what we like how we imagine our solution really please believe me that we've got for example seven sketches or eight it depends how many design sprint members we've got on the board and generally go into uh, into this uh, into these sketches and at the end of this day we've got the storyboard it means everything what should be you know prototype next days and after these two days, we are going into the prototype. So within three days, we are preparing the high fidelity prototype to test with your user. What's more, we um, prepare the test scenario. We are trying to, you know, understand how your users um, will use this uh, prototype. And generally, that's it. During the next day, we organize usability testing with, for example, five, respond five respondents, five uh, users, and we are asking a lot of questions. We are trying to understand how um, you know the prototype is used by the users. We ask a lot of questions, what they like, what they don't like, and it is totally, uh, totally great that on the fifth or sixth day, we've got real feedback from customers, from users they like or they don't like your uh, our new solution. And then we go into the next step. Um, it's called UI concept. Before on the usability testing, we are concentrating you know, on finding if the prototype is okay or is user-friendly, the navigation is good and generally the process is good. And after that, we concentrate on the pixel perfect screens. So at the beginning, we prepare always the concept, the, um, of course, in accordance with your uh, style guides, requirements from your uh, brand. And after that, we are going into whole uh, process of the graphical uh, interface. And that's it. This is just so simple. You've got an idea. We know exactly how to do it right day by day. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next topic which we would like to discuss is the solution design. So um, we'll have uh, for you actually four different scenarios. Uh, so Patricia will be speaking about the case uh, when we have the application, but it doesn't work and we don't know why. The second case or use case is that we've got a system application, but customers use only part of the functionalities. The third one is I need to change completely the uh, design of my application. And the fourth one, um, we will be speaking about uh, building not only the front part, but also what's benefits so the architecture of the application. Okay, so I can start with the first point. So solution design, you've got an application, but it doesn't work. And generally here, the, this is the simple answer. Of course, we can, um, we can recommend the UX UI audit, uh, usability audit, how it looks like. So it's, this is the process, you know, or, of website or mobile or desktop application. It depends on you um, to evaluate it. So it's recommended tool for those who want to, you know, identify usability problems in their projects. It, call, it also can help, you know, um, detect problematic areas in your, uh, in your application and trying to find, you know, um, the, uh, the biggest problems. We always recommend, as you can see on this slide, to do it usability audit, go with benchmarking. So generally um, check what has happened on the market, across the market. For example, um, talk with your respondents, talk with your actual users. And of course, of course after, uh, after such circle, we prepare, of course, UX UI report, because it is very important to see everything, what we can improve, how we can 
improve, what is important, what is the minor thing, but it is, you know, the whole complex uh, package. And of course, after such um, going through UX UA um, audit, as I mentioned, it is good idea, it is good practice to check with the users, um, to, to make a um, usability testing with your users, to, you know, to check that the solution, the recommendation, if that's work or not. This is just so simple and we really use this tool. We can go next to the, to the uh, second scenario. So please imagine that you've got an application or system, but your customers use only a part of its functionalities. It's happened, of course. And here we've got another tool, customer journey maps. So the customer journey maps, very simple, is a visual representation of the process a customer has to go through, you know, to acquire your product or a service. And generally during um, why create, we're creating a customer journey, all the actions are completed, all the steps are completed, and what's more, it is very uh, deeply analyzed. And it allows everyone of you as a customer, we as a the, um, well, provider of IT solution to understand, you know, the behavior of your solution. And what's more, we prepare, of course, the beautiful visualization of the customer journey maps, but we also additionally add some kind of new components to these customer journey maps. We go into recommendation, so we are trying to find a um, best solution as possible to, to, you know, to solve the pain points or um, or the difficult situation. And what's more, we propose such such simple smart chart, as you can see, uh, cost versus impact to the client. And it is very nice and for customers because you see exactly what kind of solution could be uh, delivered at the beginning and which one could be at the end of the roadmap. And that's it. This is just so simple. And <laughs> Last but not least, of course, uh, here in my case, uh, case that solution design you've got an old application system and you need to change. You see that they, you know, um, other other clients, others, the concurrency has different and better, uh, better solution. And we recommend sometimes just redesign or restyle your application because we go uh, into the market. Of course, we do the benchmark and uh, in accordance, of course, with your style guide, with your brand book, uh, in your rules, in your company, we can prepare just small refreshment, what could be very nice for your end users and end customers. And what's more here in that case, we um, recommend to prepare also on the design system. It is some kind of, you know, library with the components like button checkboxes radio buttons everything what is in it in the design um ready for for your developers to ready to use and generally that's it okay cool uh so the next um very easy is solutions. <laughs> uh, yeah the next case is uh, solution architecture design so we have to build a new solution front and back and we don't know that so uh, generally, we've got like a business case, we've got requirements, uh, we have a roadmap and the challenge is how to transform uh, all these into components which will deliver capabilities. So I don't know if I need a mobile app or if I need a mobile, uh, if I need a web application, maybe business process manager or maybe backend solution which will um, transform the data into um, aggregates whatever so the cases are actually uh, different so basically uh, we need a solution architect uh, that will work with uh, closely with different stakeholders um, take these requirements and provide a visual representation of uh, business solution so um, at that point you need to have a really clear picture of, um, of how you will cover those business features, how you will cover architecture, how you will cover solution implementation. And at the end, um, you need to perform some kind of like a impact analysis of how this new solution will impact on other existing tools um, in your organization. The technology actually comes at the end. So this is where uh, you will have to propose what kind of technology, what kind of um, specific uh, tools uh, can be used to uh, from the perspective of, I don't know, maintainability or, or maybe scalability of your application. So you need to also have in place 
uh, or in mind all the non-functional um, requirements, right? So, um, so, so you will be prepared also for uh, not only the current perspective, but also for the future, because obviously your your business will will grow. Uh, okay, so what comes next? So. Um, the reality is that 90% uh, of the IT projects are actually not the greenfield projects. So you need someone to help you with designing and adapting existing landscape of uh, system applications. So not replacing everything because this is easiest uh, thing to do. So you need to know how this uh, new solution, new application can integrate with the legacy system and how it can actually interact with the whole uh, ecosystem in your company, right? So you need to have a technical and architectural um, changes described, and you need to have all that impact analysis um, performed in order to have a really good uh, view on what needs to be changed uh, in your in your systems. Um, there might be also a case that you need to change or uh, remodel the process flows because uh, your tool might actually serve to different group of users or more complex, more sophisticated cases. So um, you need to also think of uh, what needs to be maybe, I don't know, built from scratch in terms of processes or maybe adapted. So uh, this is also a very important um, aspect. At the end, uh, you are looking uh, to um, visual representation of your business solution, which can outline how the company can achieve those uh, business goals that you had in your mind when you were actually planning this whole solution. And at the same time, you need to, uh, you need to um, um, minimize the time and cost because at the end, uh, you need to uh, have these constraints in your mind. So this is actually the reality of uh, every IT project. Uh, okay, so what comes next? So if we are speaking about the time and schedule, um, the problem is that you can't build a full-blown solution in a very short time. So, um, and I'm not speaking about the product deployments because um, in, with, when it comes to product, it's uh, much, much easier and, and faster to actually introduce, deploy a new product. Uh, even products also require some time for integration, configuration, and the whole change management, but this is not that case. Uh, so imagine you are actually building the new solution. So the big uh, bank approach is a very bad idea. So um, what you need to do, you need to actually divide uh, your schedule, it's obvious, into some kind of like an increment, but you need to have in mind that uh, uh, if you will introduce the milestones, like, I don't know, MVP, for instance, architecture, interim, target, strategic, whatever, uh, you need to solve the most important challenges in the first place. And that's going to be always a very difficult and complex discussion because uh, it's our nature that we always want to have everything in one step. So this is definitely not the right way to um, introduce the new tool. So you need to have like a step-by-step -step approach where you will have clear targets of each phase and you will actually address specific uh, business need or business goal. So the roadmap. Uh, okay, what about the future? Uh, so uh, we can imagine that um, your tool is actually not, or your solution is not, is not going to be built uh, just for now or for, I don't know, like perspective of the six months, right? So uh, you need to have a plan uh, and you need to think about what's going to happen when your company, your business actually will uh, grow, right? So you will have a bigger volume of the users, you will have a bigger volume of data. So this is another aspect that actually solution architecture addresses, right? So, um, and that's the right place or right, um, right time to have a plan A, B, C, in case if your business will grow, you need to have a technology in place. So um, also while planning architecture, you need to make sure that you will have a um, solid uh, fundament in the technology. Uh, that will um, uh, provide or support uh, scalability in the future. And of course, at the end, you need to have a team of people which understands uh, the changing business needs. Um, and the team can act very fast in the situations when the business will grow even 10 times. So more users of your system, the bigger volumes of the data, 
the new processes that you need to introduce. So you need to be very, you need your team actually need to be very quick to adapt those new requirements by delivering the solutions uh, in a very short time frame. Okay, so, uh, and we actually come to the point where in which we transform all that into high uh, level um, uh, or maybe those high level business requirements, which you see on the left, they will be actually transformed to solution architecture design uh, document or documentation with all those bits and pieces like what components will deliver particular features, uh, what technology will be used, how these components will interact with each other and also other uh, applications and systems in your company. Uh, you will have the uh, solution design provided by Patricia and UI. Uh, you will have the processes flows, if necessary, of course, depending actually on the complexity of your tool. And you will have uh, the long list of all non-functional features that will make sure that you will be able to um, cope uh, higher volume of users, uh, data, whatever. Um, and at the end, you will also have this um, high availability uh, description. So how your application will be monitored and um, what mechanism will guard that um, your system will operate uh, correctly without any external assistance. That's also possible in case of any failure. So all these bits actually will be described in solution uh, architecture documents. Um, okay, uh, so that's basically it if it comes to solution architecture. So we are interested, what's your story? Um, at the end of the meeting, of course, we'll have a QA and i session. So we'll be happy to answer your questions. Uh, but in general, if you would like to discuss with uh, us your case, I will be happy to do it. Um, okay, and we are in the first, uh, the third actually um, topic of our today webinar is the solution implementation. So um, implementation stage. So we are in the situation where uh, in, we know what needs to be done, right? We have the design in place um, and the next stage uh, is to make it happen. So the question is, the only question is what's your challenge? Because every actually solution implementation case is different, right? So we try to um, divide all those um, different, let's say, stories, different challenges in th three different scenarios. So the first scenario or the first challenge that you, you can actually um, have is that you are missing specialized skills. So the reasons for that may differ. So it's either a temporary need for a higher capacity of your IT, or it could be very tight um, schedule, uh, which actually requires uh, delivery of the project scope not later than date X, right? So basically, you have to increase speed to market of your team, of your project team. So what can you do about that? And of course you cannot uh, provide it with your internal IT. So what can you do about it? So the answer is team augmentation. So this is a perfect model that can address this need because basically you can, um, you can find a company, you can find a partner which will provide you a specific talent uh, the candidates will not be your permanent employees, but they will be fully integrated with your internal team. So the partner should provide the talents which will fit perfectly for a specific role. Uh, so you will have a possibility to uh, choose given candidate and of course make sure that he is skilled um, to, to deliver you specific tasks. Uh, the, one of the advantages is definitely uh, you re actually reduced hiring cost and time, of course, because uh, somebody will do it for you and you will have huge hiring um, flexibility. So um, at the end, you are capable of uh, providing, I don't know, few, for instance, machine learning uh, specialists or, I don't know, backend uh, developers that will fill this gap. So this is one challenge and the answer how you could actually uh, address it. Okay, the second uh, challenge is that uh, you are thinking about actually a little bit uh, longer term, um, term perspective. So you are looking for a partner who will support you in a long uh, term perspective. So you have to find someone who will not only have a specialized skills, so role A or B, 
but they will be uh, capable of providing the whole team of specialists. Um, and most of all, they will be reliable partner. They will support your business continuity. So they will be in line with your procedures, with your um, specific uh, procedures. And um, they, the partner actually will make sure that the software development teams will not rotate, right? So this is obviously one of the challenges uh, nowadays. So people actually change uh, the job quite frequently. So you need to have someone who will actually work with you in a, uh, in a, in a perspective. Um, so at the end, it would be great to have a team uh, that is also cost effective. This is also a very important aspect. So what's the answer? The answer to that is actually dedicated team. So you will, uh, the, your partner should provide actually uh, a team of people with given expertise, with required, exper uh, with required uh, um, experience. Uh, this complete team uh, can be actually interviewed by you, not necessary, but of course uh, you would like to see um, what skills, what um, characters those, those people will have. So they, they need to actually fit perfectly for your team, for your, for your actually internal team. And at the end, the team is stable and fully dedicated for the particular uh, client. So the budget and the timeline, that's actually everything you can agree with, uh, uh, with, with your partner. Uh, and most of all, uh, cost efficiency. So you need to consider all the administrative uh, processes and actually find the, the expert the developers. Um, it takes time, right? So, this can be completely outsourced to, to your partner and your partner actually can provide you the dedicated team. Okay, the third challenge. Um, um, so let's imagine the situation that you are in, uh, you're exploring a field which is completely new for you. So you would like to build a new solution. I mentioned earlier machine learning uh, or AI. So this is a perfect example. So. Um, we can imagine that many companies actually don't know anything about building um, a tools uh, based on the machine learning models or, um, um, or, or in general in that field, this is something completely new. So you have um, an expectations of specific business results. So you don't care how, so you just need a result. You have a budget. So let's imagine that you have not more than, I don't know, 200,000 euro or 2,100 pounds. Um, and you have a, uh, let's say timeline, right? So you have a deadline until when you need to provide such solution. Um, so the answer in that case is actually managed delivery. So you can find a partner. So we are not speaking about the products. We are speaking still about the services. So we, you can find a partner who will have expertise in given field. So they have a number of actually projects done in, uh, uh, in um, machine learning or artificial intelligence. Um, they will have an experience in managed delivery uh, and they will completely take the responsibility end to end uh, for this project. So they will deliver you the project of given scope in given timeline and within given uh, budget and at the end, if you if your project or if your solution actually will go live, they can also provide you SLI services or managed services, whatever it, whatever actually you need. So this would be the the third answer, or the third actually case. Um, okay, um, so we came to actually the end uh, of what we have prepared for you. So let's maybe just summarize uh, really quickly. Exactly. Um, so. so Okay, so from my perspective, the first field, what I mentioned, I would like to remember um, ideation and scoping that it is important to go with design sprint. It is right, right tool for finding new ideas. So problem framing, this is short workshop, design sprint, intensive, few days workshops, prototyping solutions, usability testing at the beginning and UI uh, concept. It is really uh, good to remember about that. In case of second field, solution design, I would like to remind you UX audit, if you want to, to check your solution, customer journey map, if you want to find you know, some kind of pain points in the process, find or visualize your process, redesign, as I mentioned, sometimes just restyling redesign, uh, it's helpful 
and solution architecture design. This is Matej. <laughs> yes. um, and at the end, actually, solution implementation. So different challenges, different models that you can use to succeed at the end with your solution. Okay, yes. and as we promise at the end, uh, we have also a, um, uh, a free gift for you. So uh, you can uh, use the, 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 actually the QR code and uh, sign up for a free consultation. So we'll be happy to discuss with you your specific case. So if you didn't find actually answers um, on that webinar to, to your specific case, we'll be happy to, to meet with you. Uh, or if you would like to actually take a deeper dive, uh, we'll be also happy to answer your questions. Maybe we'll be able to help. So uh, you need to hurry up uh, and sign up, actually. Uh, use the, the, the QR code. So yeah, that was actually it. And I think we can have a, um, we, can, we, can, we can start the Q&A uh, session. Uh, OK, uh, so let's take a look if there are any questions okay so maybe the first one maybe patricia i will take it what is your approach to build solution architecture documentation um okay so um there, there are actually different approaches um so in aileron we in most cases we actually adjust to our customer needs so the most uh, or the the, the easiest uh, i would say approach is uh, um, enterprise uh, architecture documentation. So many many of our customers actually use that um, use that approach. So our architects work together with um, architects from if there are any architects from from our customers. Uh, the more complex approaches uh, is to is related to um, um, TOGAF, for instance. Uh, so TOGAF framework, where we have uh, really well described. Um, the whole concept of how document actually architecture on a different level, starting from enterprise to uh, solution or technical uh, architecture. Um, so I would say the simplest is, is enterprise architect, the most more complex is the TOGA framework, for instance. Uh, okay, uh, Patricia, I think there is one also question related to UX UI. Exactly. So I answer a lie. Since you have some experience with UX UI, did you win any awards? So we are uh, totally proud of cooperation with uh, Polish Bank, SGB. And uh, we created, of course, in, uh, in Design Sprint uh, methodology, in Design Sprint Workshops, the mobile application, which actually was nominated two times in the prestigious Polish Context Mobile Trends Awards uh, in finance mobile banking. So we are uh, totally proud, and especially that we created together in the Design Sprint uh, Workshops and methodology. So. This is my answer for that. Thank you for this question. Um, okay, we can't see actually any any other questions. Um, so, yeah, so I think that's it from our side. So we would like to actually thank you for your time. Uh, so as we said, if you would like to discuss your case, we are here for you. So you can uh, pick a book F free consultation and we can speak uh, with you about your specific case. So thank you very much for today. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.